Hey everybody, welcome back just in time for the weekend. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it and do another video this week. The last video that you saw a couple of days ago, I actually filmed that Monday morning and it took a couple of days to be able to edit it and post it because I've been so poorly. It went from my chest to ear, nose and throat. I can't hear properly out my left ear and I've got tonsillitis. I'm on the mend obviously, but it's been really, really unpleasant. Although one thing did happen, I've shared it on Twitter, I'll share it with you because it might make you laugh. My cough was so bad on Saturday night that my husband, when he made me laugh, I sounded like I'd swallowed a duck caller. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, really not healthy at all. But you know, when you get the giggles and I just could not stop, we were expecting either a flock of ducks to come flying through the house or my husband was tempted to call the priest to have an exorcism. Now, and another thing that didn't make me laugh initially, but now I've come to terms with it, is my dogs didn't leave my side while I was sick. They say that pets know when their owners are ill and the girls were all over me all the time, a bit much. But Chia decided at one point that she was gonna disappear and surprise me with a new custom redesign of my favorite pair of Ugg boots. It was one of those moments where you're like, no! But then you look at her face and the waggy tail and you just think, oh, how could I ever be mad at that face? She does occasionally like to customise certain bits and bobs in the house. Trust me, this dog has no reason for it other than being naughty because she's not bored. She has got tons of toys. They have lots of mental stimulation. They are spoiled princesses. I think this was honestly just a get well soon, mummy. Always think of me when you put them on. And I will. <laughs> Even when you're feeling low, it's always good to laugh. I think it's good for the soul and good for your mental health. Which brings me on to the main part of the video, which is Catherine and William as part of World Mental Health Month. They have a month and a specific day, which is Tuesday the 10th of October. The Prince and Princess will be hosting a forum for young people to focus on building positive relationships, the importance of understanding our own emotions for World Mental Health Day. Catherine and William's Royal Foundation is heavily focused on improving people's mental health across many different areas and age groups, from homelessness, addiction, to the elderly, and of course children, especially the under fives. They promote many incredible organisation, charities and community groups. Catherine has recently launched her Shaping Us Early Childhood initiative, which she and a team of people have been working together to understand the importance and triggers that can affect us in early childhood how young we can be affected by things that happen to us and the effect that it has on us when we become adults. This is a subject that Catherine feels very passionately about. Her brother, James, her rather gorgeous looking brother, has had lots of mental health issues himself. So it's something that's very close to her heart. She's been very passionate about it. And obviously being a mother of three young children herself, she understands the importance of bringing up a happy child. Catherine and William both clearly care very much about mental health and they are using their platform and the Royal Foundation to bring organisations and charities and initiatives together to see where they can help improve other people's lives and raise awareness. So of course it should come as no surprise with the game of Montecito Whack-A-Mole. Guess who pops up? Harry and Meghan. And on World Mental Health Day, the 10th of October on Tuesday, they will be doing their very own mental health event. Theirs, however, is slightly different. Theirs is called the Archwell Foundation Parent Summit, Mental Wellness in the Digital Age. <sighs> Snore already. But guess where it's being held? New York. I'm sure that the mayor and the New York Police Department cannot wait for another attention-seeking stunt where it wastes police resources and time. The fact that they are appearing in New York so close after that stunt just shows, again, they have got absolutely no self-awareness. And I am in no doubts that there will be a few more boos when they make their appearance. Now, I've been reading a few different outlets. Of course, People magazine had the exclusive, but they talk about Harry and Meghan kept passionately about the subject because those two have their own experiences with mental health. And that is it in a nutshell. It will be about their experiences. It'll be about we, my, I, me, me. Of course it will, because all these two ever do is talk about themselves. Now, not only that, this bearing in mind, this is to be centred around 
parents and trying to make their children's lives better online community. First of all, the Sussex squad, their fan base that they have never called out are some of the most disgusting, vile trolls I have ever seen. There have been news articles about them sending death threats to people, the sick, disgusting posts that they do about, you know, the Prince and Princess of Wales, children, when the Queen was ill, when Prince Philip was ill. And some of these people, the sickest ones, Harry and Meghan have actually phoned and congratulated them. You cannot make this up. Now, even moving away from that and talking to parents about their children, Harry himself recently with Dr. Gabor Mate with Spare and anytime he's had a microphone in the last couple of years, has spoken positively about the use of A-class drugs and also taking psychedelics. And he has promoted it in a positive light by saying how it helped him clear the windscreen, the fog that he was under, how it helped him deal with grieving for the loss of his mother, how it helped him see the truth. Well, isn't that a great positive message to put out into the world? I wonder when he's at this particular forum event, if that's the advice he's gonna be giving to the parents. And speaking of drugs changing Harry's life, Harry has become a completely different person since he met the love of his life, his reason for breathing and being. The woman that makes his heart go thump, thump, Right. But seriously, anyone can see who Harry was before. I'm not saying about his personality. It's quite clearly obvious he's always been a jealous, petulant little jerk that his family have spent a lot of time in covering up. I think Harry should be given a round of an applause to the men in grey suits because they did a bloody good job in convincing the public that he was a decent human being. But that aside, Harry was a happier and healthier looking person. He had a smile on his face. He was always interacting with people. He was laughing. He was joking. He always seemed to have a certain joy when he was at royal events and engagements until he got with Meghan. And then the scowl and the anger and the bitter face at anyone taking his photograph at royal engagements started. Harry has become an angry individual since he met the so-called woman that is making him live his best life. Harry has changed mentally, physically. He no longer even has a light in his eyes. All he's done since leaving the royal family is moan, complain, whine about his family, his childhood, his horrific upbringing with such a bitter, resentful venom that it's left many people asking, Harry, are you OK? You know, wink twice if you need help. I would say Harry's mental health has gone in decline since he decided that the royal family were against him and he left and he is now living his best life. The fact that when Harry talks about his childhood and his family and everything he went through now, he very much is like his wife. He is retelling his childhood with a completely different history. You know, recollections may vary, might cover some things, but Harry has a completely different version of events that we can see, but also also what he himself has previously said in interviews. Again, talking about them advising people on having good positive mental health, look what they did to the Queen and Philip in their final years. Harry didn't care about his grandparents' mental health as he and Meghan actively sought to cause them nothing but more stress and pain right up until the weeks before they died. Meghan has completely abandoned her alien father in Mexico like she opened the fridge and found a mouldy block of cheese she forgot about. There is no emotional connection. It's like she doesn't even know her father. He is nothing to her and she just discarded him and cut him off. When Harry did his book tour and we heard the audio book, Some of Us Unfortunate Souls, and we saw him on TV interviews, when Harry spoke about the bullying allegations and the staff, when he explained that the staff were in fact slumped over their desks and sobbing because they couldn't handle criticism, he said it was such a nasty bit of contempt. There was no humility there. Bearing in mind he's talking about the fact and confirming that he and Meghan were the reason why these people were slumped over their desks and crying. What about their mental health? They still cannot move past their apparent grievances with the royals, although we've never actually heard what the royal family did to them, apart from, oh, Catherine didn't like sharing her lip gloss with Meghan. William pushed Harry into a dog bowl and broke his necklace. Boo hoo, it's childhood stuff. There are so many things that you could say about all of this. The fact that it's years later, let it go, move on. 
Find inner peace, show some forgiveness and heal. Are they letting go and trying to move on their apparent issues with the royal family? Hell no, not as long as they can keep making money off of trashing them and talking about how they are victims. Can you imagine how many people Harry and Meghan have actually hurt with all of their lies and allegations? That entire family, her family, but of course they are the poor injured souls. It's much like their arguments with safety. They care about their safety, but they have no problem with endangering other people's safety. Their privacy, they've got no problem with revealing private details about other people, but you must respect theirs. These two are the king and queen of hypocrisy. All they do is talk about themselves and blame other people. They are the very embodiment of what is wrong with some, and I highlight some, of the younger generations. These two permanently act hard done by. They are constantly blaming others. They take no responsibility for their choices, for their behaviour and for their actions. And if anyone calls them out for it, quick, they get the victim card out. It's not us. It's someone else's fault. Their so-called Hollywood dream crumbled before it even got off the ground. Do you know what they've blamed it on? Their interview wasn't so well received with Oprah because of Prince Philip died. How inconsiderate of Prince Philip. Meghan's podcast apparently only failed because it was overshadowed by the death of the Queen. Again, how inconsiderate of the Queen to choose them to die. The fact that the podcast was not renewed and they were labelled lazy effing grifters, Meghan and Harry fought back and said, actually, it's not their fault that they'd only produced 12 episodes, despite having a team of 20 producers working for them, including Spotify's own staff. It was Spotify's fault because they didn't give them enough help they didn't tell them what was expected of them well I'm sorry but someone that's got no experience in the industry I'd say if you are being given an 18 million pound contract you're going to produce more than 12 episodes in two and a half years I mean come on even the fallout and the backlash from Netflix from their six-part Wynathon docu-series they blamed before it came out because they knew it was going to tank. They blamed it on the directors. The first director quit. The second director, Liz Garbus, apparently didn't tell their story how they would have told it. So again, no matter what those two do with their own words, their own actions, their own choices, it's always someone else's fault. No doubt when they make this appearance in New York on Tuesday, they are going to have backlash because they can't help but be a disaster. And they will no doubt blame it on the fact that Catherine and William overshadowed them. They timed it. They timed it, they did. It was Catherine and William and the evil royal family's fault. No, wait, it's Piers Morgan's fault, Jeremy Clarkson's fault, the UK media. Hey, it's probably even my fault. Harry has come a long way since being involved with the military mental health initiatives, with Heads Together alongside Catherine and William, with Mind Charities, all of the royal charities that centred around mental health. He used to promote the importance of having friends and family to help you, to guide you through the dark times. He was actually thankful and grateful to not just his family and his privilege, but for his school friends, his army friends and their families who he praised and he said he wouldn't have got through it all without the support that he was given by so many people. That's all gone. Harry had no mental health support. He had no one looking out for him. He didn't even know that he needed to see a therapist until his wife told him so. It's completely delusional behaviour. He used to make people smile. Now he's just a parrot of his wife stuck in his own echo chamber of misery. When I see Harry, I feel sad for him. I feel depressed listening to him. He's got nothing positive or interesting to say, and he's lost the ability to promote anyone other than, of course, first, his wife, and then, second, himself. He has become her puppet, a lapdog. And as much as I dislike him, it's been awful to watch someone decline so quickly on such a public platform. But on a positive note, and basically the yin to the yang, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, yesterday visited the Disability Rugby League players in East Yorkshire and she was having a brilliant time. The Princess, still sporting bandages on her fingers, took part in wheelchair rugby and got the giggles. She also took part in a training session with the players and one young man was so excited that he playfully snuck up on the Princess and tickled her. Catherine was clearly initially shocked, but she laughed it off and she introduced herself to the cheeky young lad. 
I love the way that she reacted with him. There was just so much warmth and kindness with her. Catherine's visit was to help highlight how sports can help people with various disabilities to improve their skills and help improve their fitness at the same time. Sports provide a fun and varied fitness platform that everyone can take part in regardless of their disabilities. The princess apparently was also so quick to learn to manoeuvre the wheelchair that coach Tim Coyd said, I'm not saying this because it's her, but it's the first time I've seen anyone score a conversion at their first attempt. I think that she's been having secret practice sessions. No, no, clearly. This is Catherine, the Princess of Wales. She's like Mary Poppins, practically perfect in every way. Seriously, who else could make a tracksuit look that good? Catherine has always been good at sports. She's played them since she was very young. She and William are both very active and she is clearly fit as a whippet. She came to the hall with the clear intention to fully participate and that is why she wasn't wearing five inch stiletto heels and an expensive suit. She was dressed wearing a rugby tracksuit and as I said she looked absolutely gorgeous. Since Catherine has been made patron of the Rugby Football League, we have seen her become very actively involved with the sport. She doesn't just turn up for televised matches where the cameras will all be on her wearing the latest designer coacher outfits. She draws attention not just to the sports, but to the players, to the communities and the organisations that are also involved with that sport. But this is the huge difference between William and Catherine and Harry and Meghan. One couple actually commits to bringing attention to others and to great causes, whereas the other couple, especially the wife, are committed to making themselves the centre of attention. Some say that the couples are in competition with each other and I truly believe that Harry and Meghan believe that they're in competition with William and Catherine, but let's keep it real. Harry and Meghan are not in the same league as Catherine and William. They are not even playing the same game. They are on the benches, on the sidelines to a completely different sport. And I just think it's completely delusional that people can't see that these two are always going to pop up when Catherine and William are trying to do something. Their jealousy and pettiness shines on through like a beacon of light and it's just so cringeworthy. Anyway guys, that's it for me on this video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell and I will see you very soon and I'll talk to you in the comments. So take care guys, have a great weekend. Bye!